My name's Christian, and I'm cross. And I shouldn't be cross, because I own a pair of these, Harbeth Monitor 40.2s. And I bought them by mistake. You see, I wanted a pair of speakers that were really good to play my music in our family living room. But problem is, I have very young children, and young children's fingers and tweeters often come together. So I needed a pair of speakers where the tweeters were hidden. So I settled on these, safe in the knowledge that they were reassuringly expensive, even though I knew nothing about the manufacturer. So when I started listening to them, I approached them with totally neutral ears. And this sounded good on them. 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 He sounded good on them. They sounded good on them. But it wasn't until I played this that I went, what the fuck? Lemonade by Beyonce. So I thought I'd investigate further and go behind this mysterious 1970s style gauze whilst my children weren't watching. And look what I found. Holy mother of God. So I bought a pair of HL5s for my system upstairs and even another pair of these. And they all sounded bloody marvelous. So I set about investigating further in only the way I know how. Hire a cameraman, hire a camera assistant, hire a sound guy and a stills photographer, get on a plane and make a nice film at the factory. I've got some great footage. I live in uh, Edinburgh though. They're based down south. So it's about a 800 mile round trip. Unfortunately, our cameraman got mugged on his way home, which meant we had to do it all over again. And then had to get down to London to finish the edit. So all in all, about 2,400 miles. And when you take into account the costs, editing, grading, and dubbing, about $20,000. It was worth every penny because after Hans and Harry, this has become the third most viewed video on the Spitfire channel. We got a ton of likes and um, a bunch of really nice comments. Oh, card key. You know, people thanking us for the film and some dislikes, which is, you know, that's normal, you expect that. And judging by the comments, it pans out roughly like this. Some people simply think it was juvenile. Uh, the questions I asked were too basic, like what is a crossover? They say the most painful criticism is the truth. And I would agree, there is a contrivance in my tone to actually asking what a crossover is, because I already know because he told me the week before, before our footage was stolen. I guess some people just have incredibly high kind of expectations when it comes to oh, fuck, production values. And I guess the biggest YouTube faux pas is to fail to deliver on the promise of the title. Maybe some of you felt there just wasn't enough factory in this factory visit. So I think that's roughly half of the kind of malcontent. And I guess we've got to put a little bit down to jealousy. I mean, I, I know I've experienced it, whether consciously or subconsciously, there's you know, some guy bragging about owning three sets of Harbeth speakers. Fuck him. Or indeed, you know, how come he gets to visit the Harbeth factory and I don't? And then there's just basic trolls stroking their tiny, flaccid little penises into even the mildest hint, a semblance of an erection. I'd be lying if I said that the, the dislikes and the negative comments didn't prick a little. You know, I am human, and also when you consider the effort into making a film like this, we're not forcing people to see it, and it's free, it's not even monetized. And I think it's important to know that people who put themselves in front of these cameras actually are not all kind of arrogant schizoids. But there is one sector of the malcontents that I find most surprising, nay, alarming, I would say. It appears that some people have become incredibly riled by the fact that I have listened to Beyonce on a pair of Harbeths. From dude, you lost me at Beyonce, to kind of abrupt Beyonce, bye, to the person who said, this guy's clearly a moron. Clearly doesn't know the first thing about music if he likes Beyonce. But the thing that makes me really cross, and I'm glad we finally got there, it's been quite a journey, 
was when I reached out to one of these guys. Now I say guys, I hate to form stereotypes, but there's something just so guyish. I just can't imagine a girl reacting in that way. And in fact, a friend was telling me that he read an article about a study that's been done that suggests that men, all men, feature somewhere along the autism spectrum. It's why we kind of like collecting stuff. And there's something just so got to fly Qantas about these reactions to Beyonce. Anyway, I reached out to this guy and I said, have you actually ever listened to Lemonade by Beyonce? And his reaction, I wouldn't listen to that album if it was the last CD left on this planet. Having actually listened to the album, I'm just struck by why are people responding in this way? So I guess the first subset we need to tick off are the sexists and the misogynists. And of course, the racists. The group that interests me the most and riles up the greatest amount of ire in me are music snobs. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot to thank music snobs for. Oh, I had this professor who was giving me masterclasses ahead of me going to music college and he asked me what music I like to listen to when I'm not studying and I said, I lied, I said jazz, and he said, oh, well, you'll learn in this course that jazz is for children. So I have everything to thank him for, really. I ended my formal music education in that instant and used technology instead to educate me via a different means. I wouldn't have my music career, and we certainly wouldn't have Spitfire Audio if it wasn't for him. And he was definitely being a music snob. The music snobs that frustrate me the most are the willfully ignorant, the people who live in the shade, stay in their caves, and refuse to come out to look at even what colour the sky is. You know, this is contempt before investigation. The guy who's saying he refuses to even consider listening to a Beyonce CD if it was the last CD on the planet. I mean, listen to yourself. It's like one of those kids who's refusing to eat their broccoli because they don't like the color green. So I've already touched on spectrums today. And here's another one. On the left is kind of bless, not their fault all the way to the right is, we're all fucked. This is what I call the ignorance spectrum. And the leftermost point are, I guess, the dictionary definition of morons, mentally incapacitated individuals. Next up, the poorly educated, victims of circumstance. But as we slowly and gradually move to the right, we move into the land of people who are willfully ignorant. Snobs, so people who are often well-educated, but choose to be ignorant anyway almost as an affectation. Then I guess there are the tribalists, you know, people who will blindly follow, say, Arsenal, even though Arsenal are clearly shitter than Tottenham at the moment. And then we have the zealots. And I don't know if this is quite the right term for them, but I once went out with a girl. She professed to love me. She expressed a desire for us to get married, but she also maintained that I was going to burn in hell for all eternity because I didn't attend a special club in a gothic kind of building every Sunday. And whilst it's an amusing paradox, we are definitely moving into darker territory here. And this is when we touch upon nationalism. I feel very strongly about this because something very powerful happened in the UK in the 1980s. The nationalists stole our flag. The Union Jack became a nationalist symbol, not a symbol of patriotism. And by losing the nuanced difference between patriotism and nationalism, we have become lost. And where nationalism is concerned, well, I'm sorry to say, I think we all know where this ends. And what about these people? And these people? And these people? Are they all morons? Do they all know nothing about music? And what do you need to know? Anyway, I've never understood this. Is it because I haven't read up? I haven't learned about music? I cannot appreciate it fully? Is there a paper on why Beyonce is shit? I simply do not understand. Or is it fear? Is it your fear that you're projecting onto me? Well, you can have it back. Sorry, I got a bit Jonathan Pye there. But for me, fear is the tool of tyranny. And what lets tyranny in? The unwillingness to question. There are no answers without questions. Ignorance itself is not evil, but it is used by bad people for evil purposes. But worse still, a willingness to be ignorant. Uh, no, 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 no poses a grave threat to us all. Because without questions, you don't get answers. You simply get statements, you get diktat, you get tyranny. I have four amazing women in my life. My mother, who a single parent to three kids, my amazing wife, and my two daughters, 
And what I find amazing about Beyonce's Lemonade is it seems to tap in to that raw and mystical and immense powers of womanhood. Her rhythmic interpretation, the way she gets the lyrics to scan against the music behind the beat, ahead of the beat, but rarely on it, defies kind of notational logic, but has a, an inherent primordial logic all of its own. Her voice is rich with nuanced imperfection. She vacillates between being an injured soul to being an Amazonian warlord. The music is like a Seurat painting. It's a pointillistic and every dot is a kind of disparate and unusual, unexpected, sometimes crazy, sometimes super cool sample. And it just sounds so fucking fat. I have to explain the context of the first time I played that record. Uh, my daughters, we were listening to Ace of Spades. My daughters went, um, any chance we can listen to something less boyish? And I put that record on and I immediately became not only a disciple of Harbour speakers, but a humble subject of our Queen, Her Majesty Beyonce. And before I offer up a kind of standard sign-off, I really want to, from the bottom of my heart, and humbly thank you for the support you offered up with my last video linked above and below. Uh, I put a couple of polls up there regarding whether I should discuss politics and religion and your support, whether you agree with me or not, for me not censoring myself is uh, something uh, I'm very thankful for. Uh, interestingly, I, when researching this video, uh, I looked into the origins of the word moron turns out it was coined by the American Eugenic Society, otherwise known as a bunch of cunts. So there you go, uh, a C-bomb for you in support of me not censoring myself. As always, hit like if you, if you like what I do. If you don't like C-bombs, unsubscribe. And if you would like to be notified the next time I put up a video, just hit that little bell icon. See you next time.